Hi everyone, I'm so glad you're here. If you've ever heard the term carbon accounting and thought, oh no, that sounds like math in a business suit, then don't worry, we got you. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time going through uh, and simplifying what carbon accounting really means. We're gonna do it slow and calmly. I want it to make sense, no buzzwords, no stress. By the end of this thing, I want you to have a little bit more clarity on what carbon accounting is for you, for your business, and for the future. So if you have a coffee, grab it uh, and let's take a breath and let's figure out carbon accounting. Okay, I wanna start this video with some context. So. Carbon accounting didn't just show up overnight, even if maybe this is the first year your company has been asked to know it's carbon. It grew out of this global awareness all over the world where businesses are starting to realize that their emissions aren't going to just be this invisible number forever, um, meaning that you know the energy they consume, the electricity, um, the natural gas they use, the amount of kilometers or miles they're driving, all of that needs to be calculated and there's real consequences to their reputation, their ability to do business with large companies, but also to the climate and also to their operational efficiency. Like how, uh, how smart can they get on saving electricity bills, for example? So then governance began to step in. New regulations started coming in or new um, emission related calculations started coming in. There was no more guessing. It's more, um, we'll have to do it right no more, we'll do it later. Then something really big happened. Investors started to ask, they started to care. Um, and so companies with transparent carbon accounting, so again, as I mentioned, knowing your baseline year for kilowatt hours, for example, and their emission reduction plans started attracting more investors or more customers. So once companies realized that they needed to measure and manage their emissions, seriously, they started looking for standards or frameworks. So there's a bunch out there you might have heard of. I'm most familiar with the greenhouse gas protocol. It's a very particular way of measuring scope one, two, and scope three emissions of a company. There's other ways to do it. You might have also heard of other frameworks like SBTI, Science-Based Target Initiative, CDP, the Carbon Disclosure Project. There's ISOs. There's other uh, standards out there. Basically, each one would give you confidence in measuring where you are today and how you're going to get to a target. So it's kind of like over time. And this would level up your sustainability strategy. So it's not just fluffy words, but it's data, measurements, scenario planning. So if that sounds like that's a lot, it's okay. I always recommend to people start small, maybe do scope one emissions, scope two emissions for a baseline year grab a consultant to help you do that. There's lots of friendly consultants out there. There's also some software tools. If you have more than a handful of locations, you may want to start data collection automatically or automated so that someone's not typing in data into a spreadsheet. There's lots of options out there, but basically keep your initial goals realistic because then you can always build from there. All right, here are some real world examples. So company A, let's talk results. A company started measuring their carbon footprint, like I mentioned. So somebody pulls all of the electricity bills for 12 months, all of natural gas bills, propane, any kilometers or miles driven from their fleet. Uh, and they can start calculating scope one and scope two emissions. So once they knew what their baseline was, they also made some smarter energy changes. So, you know, the next time they had to buy a new machine, they made sure it was more energy efficient. They started putting in automatic light switches. So when someone's not in a room, the light switches off, LED lights, they got smarter with HVAC and they actually were able to make a legit, legitimate drop in energy consumption, therefore saving themselves some money. Um, the result was better sustainability performance. They saved some money and they were able to make some of those large customers happy because they proved they were actually doing sustainable initiatives and seeing good positive results. Company B took transparency really seriously. They decided to start sharing data publicly with everybody, their employees, their customers, their partners, 
everything internal and external. So they wrote a sustainability report. They aligned to a few frameworks uh, and they started to build up trust with investors to boost their reputation, that they weren't just saying they were green, but they could prove it. So those are two examples of companies leaning into carbon accounting. This stuff works. It's really not a theory. It can actually make a tangible profit. What does it take to get started? For me, it begins with the greenhouse gas protocol. That's, in my opinion, the gold standard as far as measuring and managing greenhouse gas emissions. It helps you figure out what to count. You know, there's lots of things to count. So what to count, how to count it, which is another really important thing. And then also how to communicate it. So how to be truthful about it. So I won't get into the weeds on how to do the greenhouse gas protocol, but I will tell you that, you know, you have to get your numbers right. So if you can get as close to the raw data as you can, then get the correct emissions factor to apply and make sure your numbers are calculated and somebody can, you know, review them or look over them. I'm really happy to report that calculating your carbon accounting is not rocket science. I want more and more people to just figure it out. So I'm hoping that this video will actually guide you. You can, you know, get a piece of paper, open up an Excel spreadsheet and start right now while we're doing this video. So one, pick your baseline year. I always recommend pick last year. If you want, you can pick the year before, um, but just pick a calendar year. Even if your fiscal year is a little slightly askew to a, a calendar year, my recommendation is actually to do a calendar year, January 1st to December 31st. It gives you something to compare against year over year. Number two is then gather your data. So electricity bills for every location you have get them month over month, then get some fuel usage, get waste bills, get business travel. I want you to go get natural gas and propane and mileage of any company owned vehicles or your fleet, any activity that releases emissions. This could even be employee commuting. So categorize it using the greenhouse gas protocol. Again, if you want to walk before you run, do this first. Let's just do scope one and scope two. So scope one is any direct emissions. So this definitely would be your propane, your uh, natural gas, and the mileage of any company owned vehicles. Then scope two would be purchased electricity. These are the energy bills. So typically this is in kilowatt hours. I want it by location, by month. You can tell we're getting into a spreadsheet. It's like a hardy looking one tab spreadsheet with a couple of months, a couple of different inputs. You can tally it all up. If you love a good pivot table, you can hop into that. And finally, you would start measuring and tracking. So you would figure out what your baseline tally was for the year. Uh, you would start to apply an emissions factor onto it. Again, this isn't difficult. You just need to do a little bit of research. The greenhouse gas protocol is really helpful. Then you would set a goal. So you don't want to maintain that. Maybe you want to reduce it by 5% or by 10% from your baseline year to three years from now. Uh, and then eventually you would share progress publicly. So don't just come up with a number and not know how you're gonna get there, but do some scenario planning as to how you're gonna get there. So there you go. In a couple of uh, minutes there, I described how to get started. It's not rocket science. So if you're ready to dive in, I'm here to help. You can figure it out yourself or I'm a real person. You can email me anytime. Uh, again, my name is Lindsay Hampson. I'm the president of This Rock. We're a sustainability consulting firm helping businesses all over the world write policies for the environment or social. We help them get ratings or certifications. And we're even doing carbon accounting because that is definitely a rising expectation from the largest customers, from your stakeholders, and even from your employees. So you can find us at thisrockesg.com and feel free to email us. We would love to help you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a little bit about carbon accounting. Have a great week. See you later.